Good morning, you two. How are you doing? Doing well. Good. How are you doing? Well, I've been waiting to talk with you guys because this is one of those movies that it, it's the experience. It's the reason why you've got to see it on a big screen. You've got to go and experience this movie. Thank you. Yeah, it's you know, and it's a small movie. You know, yeah. it's made for not a lot of money, and uh, uh, you know, it's it's interesting that we're even here talking to you. <laughs> Um, uh, but people seem to have, you know, uh, this Charles Manson, 50 years later, I still resonates with people and, and people are very interested in anything having to do with Charlie Manson. As, as a member of this, this committee that brought all this together, I mean, as a director, as an actor, I mean, my God, I mean, did, is it, was it weird to step into the story fearing that you were going to bring something back out of, out of that legacy? Uh, it wasn't at first, and as we were going through it, and people kind of started to catch wind of, of what we were doing and the subject matter, you do get a couple of odd messages here and there, and uh, it, it it did come across my head at some point. But you know, we're, the movie I think is about Charles Manson, but he's not in it, and it's not we're not redoing history in any way. It's kind of an interesting, you know, what if storyline. Um, that we kind of just have fun with, but you know, there uh, there have been a couple of people who who told me not to do Charlie wrong, which uh, mm-hmm. which was interesting. <laughs> <laughs> well, look at the way that you utilize the strength of that voice. Oh my God! When I heard that voice, yeah. I mean, I sat up straight. You know, it's interesting because when the first cut of the movie, it wasn't great, and uh, uh, my my friend Gavin O'Connor, who wrote and directed Warrior and and uh, Miracle, he's a great great director. We gave Remy a lot of notes, and one of the things that uh, that we said was, you got to put Charlie, because yeah. there's clips available of him, mm-hmm. and you got to put Charlie not only visually but his music. You got to kind of sprinkle it in this movie because it really creates that feeling of Manson. When when you see Charles Manson, I mean, he is one of the faces. I think that throughout the world you you easily identify with yep. and and what he is and that puts you into that that mindset uh so it was important to have him in there yeah and you know we we start the movie with a, a small montage of you know of manson and of the murders i think it just puts you in a very uneasy <laughs> yeah. uh mindset before the movie even starts which which was the goal I'm glad you brought up the music because a lot of people to this day in this moment of now don't understand that Dennis Wilson was the one that brought Charles Manson to, to, the, to the Beach Boys. And we really Correct. didn't get to hear what, what Charles was feeling on the inside. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, they, the, I forgot his name. He's a producer who produced the, uh, the Beach Boys. Oh, he produced a lot of people in Laurel Canyon at the time. Like there were some big bands, you know. From from bir- the birds to the doors and and uh, mamas and the papas and and he was the one who was who owned the house where Sharon Tate and Roman Polanski wow. rented. Wow! And yeah. and he they mistakenly killed the wrong people, thinking that he was there. What was his name? I, I don't yeah. remember. Yeah. So it was all it was all a matter of happenstance that yeah. Sharon Tate was there. Mm-hmm. You know, one of the personalities inside this movie, The Resurrection of Charles Manson, that desert, because people feel fear yeah. in a desert as well. The yeah. desert, I'll tell you, the desert uh, sucks. <laughs> I was there for a month. <laughs> it, uh, You're playing with with powers that are not in your control. I mean, you know, that uh, the whole climax of the movie takes place at night and there's yes. a fire sequence. And we're shooting that night one and uh, a 40 mile hour wind comes and shuts us down. And, Out of nowhere. And that's it. Yeah, you can't fix that. Yeah, and there's there's a there's a certain energy vortex yeah. in deserts that uh, you know people talk about New York City being dangerous, and I went. I grew up in New York City. It's nothing compared to the desert. Yeah, it's too quiet. Yeah, because I grew up in the in the state of Montana, and when we'd get out there in the middle of the night in those wild plains of Montana, the flatlands, oh my God, it was it was like that's where the spirits are flying. That because they're coming in there to kick your butt. I, yeah, dude, I just referenced. <laughs> I did a movie out Montana, and I just referenced Montana. I went aside from the desert. Montana is the scariest place I've ever been. <laughs> <laughs> that big sky country, man, it'll it'll level you in a heartbeat. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> now the, the concept of a young couple come up with a great idea to send an audition tape for a Charles Manson film. Right away, you have my attention because I would do it. If he was doing a movie and I wanted my music out there, I would do it. Right. 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 Yeah. And, and you know, the couple, it's they're not really what you learn. And I won't give too much away, but 
they're not really a couple. There's a, you know, there's a, uh, there's a plan in place that we don't know about by one of these people. So it's all tied together. You know, you talked a little bit earlier about about this being a small film, and yet the texture of movies lately have been like that's the ones that we are drawn to because and and I think what what I what I feel is is that you've only got so much time to film, you can't screw it up and keep doing things over and over again. And I like no, that no, rawness no. about it. Yeah, you have yeah. to be you have to be ultra. You know, I listen. I've made sixty movies, forty five of which are you know probably under ten million bucks, and. <laughs> I love that world because of that reason. It is very raw, and uh, and it's you know you're you're hyper creative, and you know you're always behind the eight ball, and there's something magical comes out of that. It doesn't always work, but when it does, it's really cool. Yeah, you gotta be quick on your feet. So what was it like for you, Remy, when, you, when you're behind that lens and Frank lands that line? I, I would be the type of guy that would say, "Stop! I gotta breathe." He landed it. He freaking landed the line. <laughs> The lines are great. I'll tell you, there's a scene in the movie where um, he, he, it's a dream sequence, but he kisses the the girl on the forehead. And I forgot that it was in the script and the chill that went down my spine when I was watching that, I still remember. <laughs> I can be creepy. Well, see, that's what's fun about movie making is the fact that we, we need to hear more about the stories of being on that set because, I mean, we, we, we I, I see the final product. I speak for hours about this movie. Yeah. We, I could speak for hours. I mean, we got shut down. We had things go wrong. We had on realities. Yeah. It's funny. It's always, you know, again, this movie was under a million bucks and, and uh, it's, you know, these actors were kind of neophytes and it's always the, the, the young people who cause the most problems. <laughs> who who have the biggest egos for no apparent reason? Yeah, and uh, so Remy had to deal with a little bit of that as well. Oh my! How'd you do that? Because I mean, one of the, I had a program director tell me one time, Remy goes, he says, "My job is not what you think it is; it's ninety percent psychologist." That's right. It is <laughs> trying to you know make people. It's a lot of manipulation of trying to think your idea is their idea. Yeah, yeah, it's a bit Machiavellian. <laughs> yeah. What did yeah. you guys learn from doing this movie? Because, I mean, you can't go into a project like this without pulling something from it. Oh, I mean, I learned so much. You know, this was this was such a great experience for me. It was almost like my master's program. Um, you know, it's be, be more prepared than you think and make sure that everyone you're working with understands, you know, what their role is. I think that that's an issue with – with this level sometimes is everyone wants to be a part of of everything but it needs to kind of just be a clear path and and make sure your father has almonds in the trailer. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now now war party was a part of this right i mean let's we got we got to give some kudos no. to that they were not part of it no 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 no, no. we we uh no the war parties uh, you know i listen I would have never done this movie in, in, in the real world, but uh, it was an opportunity for me not only to work with Remy, but to kind of guide him yeah. and, and make sure that what he did, uh, you know, you know, got attention in, in the right way, yeah. you know, because if it's his first movie and it's, it's really bad, yeah. that, that's kind of it. Yeah. You know, you, it's kind of, you got to come out of a hole yeah. to get another opportunity. So I just wanted to make sure um, you know, again, that we had this, we had this experience together, but more, more so that he was successful at it. And, uh, you know, I could get him out of my house at some point. He could direct <laughs> his own movies. Yeah. Well, what was that like for you in the way that, cause I mean, when I was talking with David Crosby about working with his son, it brought him to tears. It has to get into your emotions as well to see your son doing this. Yeah, man. You know, and, and, you know, I have come to tears and, when the first time I watched it by myself, I, you know, this is my baby, yeah. <laughs> you know, this is my first, <laughs> this is my guy. And, and uh, he's been on sets with me since he was born. Mm. And it was, it's just, you know, it, it also just marked, it marks time for me. It was like, wow, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of getting up there. And, uh, <laughs> and, you know, now my boy is, is, is created his career and it, it's, it's, a, it's an amazing existential experience without getting too kind of, you know, <laughs> mushy wow well congratulations on the resurrection of charles manson i expect to talk to the two of you many more times in the future because this is a collaboration that will always grow forward thank, thank you, you brother appreciate it well you guys be brilliant today okay you too <laughs> <laughs>